In this video, we're going to look at a structure that originates from the heart. It's a large elastic artery called the aorta. And we're going to actually see that as blood travels through the arch of the aorta, or the aortic arch, how that blood is distributed to certain parts of the body. And this is by no means the whole body. We're just looking at the blood vessels, that is arteries, that are very close to the aortic arch. Okay. Now, before we go any further, I just want to preface that uh, we're not looking at a model here. Um, in fact, nothing's drawn to scale. We're really just looking at the flow of blood from the aortic arch. Okay. So first of all, let's talk about the aortic arch. So we know that the left side of the heart, the left ventricle specifically, is what pumps blood out to the peripheral tissues, all the tissues of the body. But in order to do that, the left ventricle pumps blood into the aorta. So this whole thing right here is really the aorta, right? And there's three parts of the aorta. There's first of all the ascending aorta, which carries blood upwards. There's an arch of aorta, or the aortic arch. And then there's a descending aorta. And you could imagine that the descending aorta carries blood down toward the inferior thoracic organs and then the remainder of the abdominal organs and the lower limbs. Okay, So blood is going to move unidirectionally from the ascending aorta through the aortic arch and down the descending aorta. But we see that there's several branches here. For example, we have the right coronary artery and the left coronary artery. Then we have the brachiocephalic artery, the left common carotid artery, and the left subclavian artery. So hopefully at this point we understand that the left side of the heart is going to be pumping blood to all the tissues of the body to supply them with oxygen and nutrients. Now specifically on the left side, it's the left ventricle. And the left ventricle is going to pump blood ultimately into this structure right here called the aorta. So the aorta is a very large elastic artery that's going to ultimately distribute blood everywhere. And it does so through this arch-like structure. So the part of the aorta that goes up right here is the ascending aorta. The part that curves around is the aortic arch or arch of aorta as it shows here. And then this part going down is the descending aorta, which you can imagine is going to carry blood down toward the inferior thoracic organs and then also uh, the abdominal organs and the lower limbs. Okay, But we see here that on each of these parts of the aorta, particularly the arch and the ascending part, we have branches. So for example, on the ascending aorta, we have the right and left coronary arteries. And then on the arch, we have three main branches. We have the brachiocephalic artery, the left common carotid artery, and the left subclavian artery. So what we're going to be doing here is really just looking at each of these branches and talking about where they go. Okay. What do they supply? How do they branch? And so on and so forth. So first, let's talk about the left subclavian artery. That's one of these that originates off the aortic arch. So the left subclavian artery is right here, and it's going to diverge into two different arteries. Okay. One of them is going to be the left axillary artery. Okay. The left axillary artery, we're going to terminate here with that because we're going to cover it in the next video. But what we're going to see is that the left axillary artery is going to really supply blood to the entire left arm. Okay. So we'll, we'll pick up with this in the next video. But then the left subclavian artery is also going to divide into the left vertebral artery. This is a thin artery that's going to go upward toward the brain. Okay. And the left vertebral artery at some point, pretty much when it gets into the cerebrum itself, is going to become the basilar artery. Now you notice here I didn't put left basilar artery. And if you take a peek over here, I didn't put right basilar artery. That's because essentially the right vertebral artery and the left vertebral artery, when they get to the level of the cerebrum, they kind of merge back together. And so there's really only one basilar artery. Okay. So eventually the left vertebral artery will fuse with the right one. Okay. So that's your left subclavian artery. And so you can imagine that because the left subclavian artery doesn't go straight up, it kind of goes laterally, that at least part of it is going to go toward the left limb, and that's the left axillary artery component. All right, now the middle branch right here off the aortic arch. This is the left common carotid artery. So it's common carotid because it's eventually going to divide into the left external carotid artery and the left internal carotid artery. Okay? So the one that's actually going to be on the inside of the body, that's going to be the internal one, and the one that goes more outside or superficial is going to be the external carotid artery. Okay? But that's going to be the divisions of the left common carotid artery. Now, 
if we look at all this on the patient's left side, it's pretty much going to be a mirror of what's on the right side, except for one difference. Okay? Notice we have a right common carotid artery right here. We have a right subclavian artery. However, instead of actually um, originating separately on the aortic arch, they originate together from what's called the brachiocephalic artery. So there is no left brachiocephalic artery. There is no right brachiocephalic artery. It's on the right side, but it's just brachiocephalic artery. Okay? So this is actually what we sometimes consider the first branch off of the aortic arch. So the brachiocephalic artery is going to divide into the right subclavian artery and the right common carotid artery. And from there, everything's going to be pretty much the same as it was on the left. So the right subclavian artery is going to divide into the right vertebral artery, which is going to go up the side of the head, and ultimately it's going to converge with the left vertebral artery in the cerebrum, where it's going to merge into the basilar artery. Okay? And then the right subclavian artery will also diverge into the right axillary artery, which you can imagine is going to serve blood to all of the right arm. Okay? Then, of course, we have the right common carotid artery, which is going to diverge at some point into the right internal carotid artery and the right external carotid artery. So there's a couple other things I want to mention here that are important points. Uh, one, make sure you're using your lefts and rights. Okay? With the exception here of the brachiocephalic artery and the basilar artery, everything here is going to have a left and a right. Okay. If you're talking to a healthcare practitioner of any kind and you say, oh, the patient's, uh, let's say, axillary artery, that does no good because they don't know what you're talking about. Is it the left arm or the right arm? Okay. If you're talking about the internal carotid artery, is it the left or the right? That can make a huge difference. So make sure you're using your lefts and rights. Okay. The other thing, which I just want to point out again, hopefully you can see it, is that the right side differs from the left only because of this brachiocephalic artery. Okay? Instead of actually these two arteries right here originating independently on the arch of the aorta, they originate from a common artery called the brachiocephalic artery, which then diverges into the right common carotid and right subclavian. But if you forget about the brachiocephalic artery just for simplicity, the right side is pretty much identical to the left. Okay. Now, before we conclude the video, I do want to mention that coming off of the ascending aorta, right, uh, pretty close to the heart, in fact, um, we have the right and left coronary arteries. Okay. We're not going to go in detail about those in this video. That'll be a separate video. But the coronary arteries are actually the arteries that serve the heart muscle itself. So the heart doesn't just pump blood okay, to the rest of the body. It actually requires some blood itself right, for its heart muscle. And so these arteries, which are called coronary arteries, supply the heart muscle itself. And I think the heart deserves that, right? The heart pumps blood to everybody. It's pretty much a selfless organ. So it deserves to keep a little bit of the blood for itself, okay? And that's going to serve the heart muscle. And there is a left coronary artery and a right. We're going to talk about those branches in a separate video. But hopefully this gave you a good understanding of the branches of the aortic arch. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the next video, we're going to talk about the branches of the subclavian arteries, so make sure to join us then. Thank you.